Good morning, it's Vaughan at westcoatbellpottery.ca in Nova Scotia, Canada. Um, this is a cone 6 kiln unloading, a uh, little bit unique because it's mostly frames. Um, and there's a lot of plates in there with this sort of uh, wintry scene, Icelandic series and uh, some summertime series as well. But, um, but um, some cheese dishes, we'll see. It was a perfect firing, but it took a long time because it was so heavily loaded. There's that. Uh -huh. Get that greased, I guess. See what we have anyway. All right. Um, when I'm packing kilns with plates, frames, anything like that, I have two sizes of kiln shells. I've got 18 by 24s and I've got 18 squares um, so that I can do this kind of big, small, big, small and so on. Um, and that way I seem to get a lot of pieces in this kiln um, and, uh, and it feels a little warm. I, I checked that it was reading 180 at the top in the back there so I was figuring the bottom is a little cooler. Um, that's Fahrenheit. I'm not going to touch those, those seem a little hot at the moment. Uh, oh, that's better. And that's okay there, but I, I think it's still, I'm going to let it cool for another hour, I think, before I unload it. So the, the optimal temperature would be around 140. 160 is what you cook, <laughs> well, supposedly what you can cook chicken to, uh, about 170 really, but 165, I was told by one restaurant. Uh, to kill all the bacteria, so you don't want to touch things that are around 160 to 180. And um, but the uh, you know I think 140 should be in about an hour. It's a big kiln. So. Um, anyway, it's uh, you know it's summer and the flowers are. Let me give you a quick look. The flowers are doing really well. Everything's on sale at the garden center at the moment. Um, so I just went up there this morning and took a look what was there. Everything's a bit crowded in the pots and such, um, but, um, but I still like to buy flowers, even though it's August the 2nd. And of course you can show you the water while you're here. There you go, so it's a gorgeous day. It's supposed to get to about 80 degrees today, um, but very pretty day today. Anyway, see you in about an hour. It was just super busy. Complaint, complaint. Anyway, um, I'm actually uh, two hours later now. So, um, so these are going to be nice and cool. Yes, they are. So, um, so I'll go through these fairly quickly. There are some big canisters in this kiln too. So um, they should be really nice. But this is apple green and copal white. And that's the mouse gray. My wife was actually glazing these pieces. I was showing her how to do it. So we'll, um, that's the bright blue and folk art white. Over, these are all on the really speckled clay. That's the bright blue matte turquoise. It's almost a little purple. Yeah, I think it's the bright blue, but it could have some purple in that too. We did a lot of texturing. These frames always turn out totally flat too. That one was a bit thin there, and that's what's happened with that turquoise. I literally used every kiln shelf. Matte turquoise, folk art right, and mouse gray. That's a nice frame. And this is uh, variegated blue with folk art white. It's on a bit thin, but it's uh, got some nice reflections in the texture there. So. Matt 
turquoise, bright blue, and apple green. We actually been doing a lot of tiles and a lot of um, frames to go with the tiles, and that's folk art white, apple green, with bright blue again. But this season so far seems to be mostly small things, mugs, tiles um, that are selling rather than artwork. So that's just a sense of the. Oh, you know, we're halfway through the season now. It's uh, August the second. Uh, people seem to be buying smaller, less expensive things. If you're doing craft fairs, that's a good thing to know before you get to the show. Apple green with a little bit of the matte turquoise on there. Apple green again. I think that's all apple green. Yep, that's all apple green. Matte turquoise and folk art white. And that's the mouse gray again, which they actually call mouse brown in mastering cone six places. Oh, that's nice. It's using shells on the outside edge of the frame with apple green and folk art white. That's bright blue and purple. Bright blue and folk art white. And we got some cheese dishes going through, or butter dishes, uh, that'll be in the next firing, but these are the bottoms to them. Two more of the butter dish bases. Here's the cone that was at the top, and that's the seven that's the last one, so it was just beginning to bend. Um, this was a firing that took a long time um, to even out about uh, almost an hour for this top to reach the temperature that the bottom had reached. So we'll see. Let's see. I was balancing the kiln. This is the bottom. This is the top. I'd say it was pretty close to exact. So, but it took like an hour later for the bottom to actually um, to actually catch up with the you know the top. This is a bright blue frame. And this is folk art white with bright blue and apple green. And there's another bright blue frame, kind of came out dark though. And that's another bright blue frame. So the bright blue wasn't on thick enough, and that's why it's a little bit dark. The clay is showing through more. What made this a very efficient firing, when you fire a kiln, you try and make your money back. Uh, I've made lots of these trays to go in there. These are the centers of the frames, so I can use them up just as little trays. And then just multi-glaze. And I sell all of these for around anything around. These are probably 15 to 20 bucks a piece. Maybe 24 for some bigger ones. But when you, when you sell half a dozen of these, that's your firing. And while I'm making the frames, you just take the center out and you pat it down, texture it, pat it down over a mold, and you, you actually... Uh, they're, they're super quick to make, but they're very useful. That's a really nice one. So kiln fillers. And here's apple green and folk art white. Just apple green over the speckled clay. This one's nice. This is apple green. Should go that way, I guess. Yeah, I've got a tile. This is for one of my tiles. Now, I have in this firing at the bottom some really large canisters in these colors. Remember the bowl in the last kiln unloading? I really liked it. Well, I glazed a whole bunch. 
in those colors because this is that fake ash and it really looks, it's a nice glaze. And it looks really good with the green. This is one of Jackie's. And this is one where the, the mouse gray looks really nice when it's on thin. And then there's the apple green in the middle too. And the mouse gray likes to be thin by the look of it because that's beautiful. Wow. This is one of mine and I put the turquoise on really heavy. And look how nice that came out. I was kind of not sure about using turquoise for a frame because it's going to have to fit in the house with some where somebody lives with a color scheme. So this is uh, might be a hard frame to sell, but I love it. Here's a hint of what's to come. I have a whole dinner set. Different size plates in the winter scene. Now we have a few of these, but I don't have the bottoms out yet. Um, and that's how we fire them on stilts. And these are the little cheese dishes or butter dishes. The stilt comes just pops right out. Here you go. Here's another turquoise one with the whale on top. And there's the stilt down in the bottom and you just pull it right out. So it's a nice way of firing so you, don't, you can glaze the edge of the whole piece. And there's the chun green. I should let you see the whale. I'm not sure how successful it will be sales-wise, but that's folk, uh, not folk art, fake ash with the apple green over it. And that's that clear glaze liner glaze that I use on the inside. I actually dabbed all the glazes over the top of the base turquoise in these, but it has sort of soaked in and absorbed it. Not on this one, this one it showed up. There's the, uh, and the apple green with the turquoise and then the gray over the top. So that one's nice. Making these whales is such a time consuming little hand knob. <laughs> Of course, when you fire on a stilt like this, it means the piece isn't sitting on the kiln shelf, so you've got glaze on the edge of the rim, which is really nice, but also they don't warp. So I've had, when I fire them on the kiln shelf, or if the kiln shelf's a touch warped, the whole bowl will warp. So, um, so basically, it's a good way of keeping them from not warping. Here's two more of the lids. Um, fired on the stilts. They don't warp and that comes right off easily. And this is the folk art, sorry, the fake ash. Um, and I think it's, uh, actually it went really orange, didn't it? In that lid anyway. And here's the other one with the green. It's less orange, but it's still very orange. We'll be interested to see the jaws. And this is a very nice frame. A big one. All right, so that's close to 18 inches square because that was almost as big as the shelf itself. So um, nice frame. Two more of the, well, three more of the little side plates for the winter scene. Ooh, this is one of my frames. It's folk art white, turquoise, and apple green. And I actually tried this one to make it look kind of funky. With a, I used a roller, I textured it, um, and I used a roller and wiggled the roller a little bit. And I think that worked nicely. It's like a very funky frame. That's another winter plate. I call them the Icelandic series. And there's another one of my wiggle frames to make them look a little bit not totally square. 
except for the frame is square. It's just the inside makes it look wiggly and funky. Another winter plate. Another folk called uh, fake ash glaze with apple green and a bit of oatmeal, I think, on the center in there as well. Apple green, bright blue with folk called white again. That is a nice frame. It's the last two small plates with the Icelandic winter series. And then we move on to the regular time of the year. Got a beach time. <laughs> yeah, that's the wrong way. Let's see. So the, this is the regular summer series, I call it, beach time. And there's the larger plate. It's going down nice. I've I have a video doing how, showing how I do these, and you could do these with small amounts of glaze, just it's basically stamping and pouring. Two more kiln fillers. Nice texture in that one. There's the larger winter series. And we have two more of the small ones. Another large summer plate. There are four of these all together. Two more winter medium plates. And there's another summer larger plate. Two more summer little plates. And there's the summer middle plate and the winter middle plate. Winter large plate, that's nice. Winter middle plate. And there's the summer. There's another winter large plate. And two summer plates. Another winter large plate. Two summer small plates. That's different. I tried a different way of doing that one. That's right. That's what. That's the way I'd been trying to do them upside down. And then this one, when I was pouring, I thought I'd try a different way of doing it. I like the original. Two more of the small summery ones. A little summer and a little winter. There's another one of the winter ones. Another whale first. That bowl in the last firing, I loved it. And so this is what I did after I did the bowl. I tried to get something that had a lot of texture to work with the fake ash to encourage the kind of variation that it does. Um, and I think that worked really nice. The way that fake ash loves to do that kind of run a little bit, and with the green, it just emphasizes all of that. Isn't this beautiful? And there's the tools, artisanpotterytools.com is where I get those textures from, artisanpotterytools.com. This is a, just a beautiful set of canisters. See how the glaze varies depending on the flame? Just really nice. And the lids, I'm not sure whether the lids fit in. <laughs> yep, that one fits on this one. So they should fit randomly because I made them all the same size, but Sometimes a lid fits better on one jar than the other. And this one I did extra apple green. And I did some brush strokes with the apple green going from slightly at an angle. And I think I did oatmeal too over the fake ash. But don't you feel like that? You can see those little dribbles, those little runs. It really is a nice glaze. It's a tough one to glaze with because it likes to flake off the pots though. So I had to add a lot of gum arabic and boy is that expensive now. 
anyway it's like a little bottle it's 20 bucks all right so that's the firing i'm packing it right up again today because uh, i have another firing with a lot of the bases for the other pieces as well uh, it is august the 5th and um, i have a follow-up glaze firing here this will be two glaze firings in one week um, spent a whole week glazing but anyway uh, cone six oxidation it seemed to go pretty well um, the cone at the bottom was still behind the one on the top but only you know like 20 minutes behind uh, so that's not bad for a big, a big kill like this um, and there's some refires and some interesting blazes that I followed up on from the last fight so let's see this one doesn't have as many fish and tiles in it but there are some and a lot of refires because Jackie did not like those frames that came out of the kiln um, so I reglazed much heavier on them it was a hot day sunny and I put them out in the sun to warm up and then I took a brush glaze and just glazed the same glaze brushed over the top and I added a little glaze thickener to it uh, uh, basically just to you know um, Epsom salts uh, it thickens the glaze up so when you brush it on it doesn't run uh, and then they dried fairly quickly um, so we'll see, but I'm expecting some disappointments because of the actual uh, refire of frames, especially. So let's see. That's a bit too hot to touch at the moment. So I'm not going to go for that one yet. That's better. There you go. Pretty much totally flat. Um, and that's apple green and a bit folk art white with a little blue, I think, touched into the corners there. And all that. So that's a pretty nice frame. I'm not going to count any chickens in this. Well, that's a funky frame. <laughs> yeah, that looks like it would be fun in one of Jackie's little painted tiles. I think that one. I'm not sure because I made it off. You know, I, I took a roller and pressed it along, um, and the clay pushes forward as you're rolling like that, so it stretches the square into a little odd, randomly shaped frame. And I think that's kind of nice. It reminds me, oh, of course, Pee Wee Herman just passed away. Something Pee Wee Herman would put into his house. <laughs> oh, yes, the blue looks good. Um, all right. That's what Jackie was trying to do the first time, but she applied it too thin. Um, when I sponge stamped these, um, and... When you're sponging, it doesn't go over the back. You have to have load the sponge up totally, so there's nothing dripping, but it's fully loaded. And then you barely touch the surface, and it just leaves the glaze on there um, without leaving an imprint of the sponge. Um, and there's a trick to that, obviously, but um, but this time it's really good. Yep. Thank you. I think these are probably 140 degrees Fahrenheit. So that's another one of those frames. I just rolled the edges a little bit, but it's not that much off center. But I also rolled randomly in the center with the green so that I've got thicker and thinner areas in it to kind of break up the, so, you know, the evenness. Nice frame. A lot of lids, and there must be a lot of jars down here too. The bottom of the kiln here. The blue, and this is over speckled clay, uh, is a little less bright, and you can see the texture through it because there's a lot of chattering on these little pieces and all that. But that's bright blue, same as that frame, with variegated blue and oatmeal over it. So these should have lids. There you go. The, the lid is actually a little brighter than the pot, maybe because that's a horizontal surface and it doesn't run down a little bit. But there's no running on these anyway. That may not be the lid for this one. I actually could have this lid. Well, I've tried to make the lids fit um, all the jaws so I could play around after the firing. There are little spoons that will be hanging off the side of these. Just little wooden spoons. I couldn't find the little wooden spoons I made with the sugar creamer sets that had a tray. 
because uh, they were beautiful spoons. And they look like they're from Malaysia or something, but um, I don't think you call it Malaya anymore, do you? Um, but anyway, uh, so I was disappointed in the wooden spoons I could find. A couple of my normal, bright blue, variegated blue, and oatmeal. And I lightened my oatmeal by mixing a white glaze into my oatmeal. It's coming out quite white now. So maybe I need to add a little of the iron ochre to it again. These are just trays for some little butter dishes that will be coming out later on. Same with all these, they're just going to have little domes over the top of them. The ones I just did, I, put, I think I just posted the video of the little domed uh, cheese dishes or butter dishes. They have whales on them, it's, these are the bases for them. So they got the. You can actually, on plates like this, you can scrape the knife on the edge of that rim there without getting it on the outside edge. And that's, that's a good feature of making a little dish like this to put a dome over the top. Here's the green, and it didn't turn out very well the first firing at the beginning of this video, uh, but this firing, it really looks good. And this is one um, that's on speckled clay. A very pretty thing. Here's another one that I use the roller on to stretch the frame out and make it uneven. And that's actually apple green, folk art white, and actually the bright blue over the top of the apple green. So that way you get a, a kind of a two glazes combo, but not too much blue on that one. But it, it makes the green in the center stand out. Where's that purple? It's an amazing purple, isn't it? It comes out really rich and dark sometimes too. People seem to love that purple. Very often, I call it rutile green. It's basically my bright, bright blue recipe with rutile, uh, which is in the bright blue recipe. And then I added copper carbonate instead of the cobalt carbonate. Sometimes I use cobalt oxide in the blue or sometimes cobalt carbonate. Both are hugely gone up in price, so. This is a refire. And I think Jackie is going to be super happy with that one now. So putting them out in the sun and thickening the glaze and refiring them is actually worth it. I, th I thought some of them these will crack, and I, they still may be. But that's a nice frame. This is a refire, and it's increased the blue quality of it, but not as much as the last frame. But it's still much better than it was dropping down in temperature just in this few minutes. That's gorgeous. All right, that's the uh, matte turquoise, which was showing a lot of clay through in the last firing. This firing, it's really nice. Oh, this one Jackie was really unhappy with, and now it's gorgeous. Really nice. We had a loon tile that Jackie wants to frame in this one. I'm not sure which way around she'll frame, but uh, that will look terrific in it. Okay, there's how I fire the lids. It's going over here. I'll have to sort all these out later, but it's just... Yeah, that fits, I guess. I like a rim so you can put your fingers on and pick it up. I'm going to have to play musical lids later on. This piece sat on my glaze shelves in the studio for ages, and I just couldn't fit it in any firing. But finally, I fit it in. Little baking tray, and that's in the red clay number 80 from Laguna, which goes in the oven. And that will have a chicken roaster pot on the top of it. The ones I was really waiting for to see how, if it was nice. And I think it is. Remember the bowl that came out of earlier in the last kiln firing? Um, I'm going to post, probably post two kiln firings in the same video. Uh, but isn't that pretty? The chattering is just so beautiful. And then on the outside, oh, just as nice. It's a fake ash glaze. Uh, apple green and oatmeal. I already had coffee. Anyway, there you go. It's nice, the stilts just pop right off. 
So um, I love firing on stilts. It's actually less work because you don't have to clean off all the things. You don't have to wax resist your uh, little gullies in the jaws. You can glaze right up to the rim edge. I'm sure I've spent some money on stilts, but I did a video on making your own stilts a year or so ago. You know, is it going to be popular with the customers? But I really love this glaze combo. This sort of rusty orange, you know, with that kind of regular ash glaze look as well. I hope the customers like these. I like making that color. Okay, these have lids, and these are the little spoon uh, sugar jaws, basically. I made two styles of lids. I made that style that just pops inside like that. And then I also did, I want to leave that one like that. And that probably isn't that one either, but, but two styles. I don't know which you prefer, but I uh, hope the spoon still fits. There's another blue one. Little lids all fit, that's great. There's my little jaw. I'm in love. I love this color combo. You know, living on the ocean here, it's everybody's here, and this, you see blue green, blue, blue, green. And that's what's mostly selling on this location. I have to make lots of blue and green. But it's so nice when you see something different. And it didn't crack. This was the one I was sure would have a crack in it because it's so big and this is a refire isn't that beautiful it's got blues and greens on the rim it was basically a green frame and I took the blue and I dabbed it over the top to try and thicken up the glaze so it was a bit more intense and then the folk art white in the center but isn't that nice yeah. okay Couple more frames. Bright blue folk art white, apple green, matte turquoise, and folk art white. A bunch more of the bottoms for the actual butter dishes, and there's one for the cheese or butter dish. There should be four of these because this is an order Tenmiku gold, variegated blue, or bright blue, and then the oatmeal. And these are all the same, and that one's really pretty. Another one, so they all look a little different depending on how I glaze. These are the butter dish or cheese dish bases, and there's a turquoise, blue, green, copper, red with some green stamped in the center, and a little bit of oatmeal by the look of it. This is pretty though. That's the matte, sorry, that's the rutile green. When it's thin, it goes yellow, and when it's thick, it goes green. Chun green with a swirl of oatmeal and apple green maybe in the center and just regular bright blue. Four, blue, four of the blue ones, like I said blue's the color, one more of the turquoise ones that's also popular around here. Ah, one that crawled a little bit. On the inside rim that one crawled a little bit so I'll have to refire that. I'll just throw in some glaze brush it in the inside but it's actually John Green, with a glaze, variegated blue and oatmeal over the top, but that looks ugly on the inside there. So refire, and then we got two of the uh, bright blue. Also, oh, this is probably number 16 glaze, which is the same as bright blue with some iron in it, so it always comes out a little different. And they got little spoon holders on. That looks nice. Buy them together, then it's easy to sort them out. Tenmiku uh, gold, bright, variegated blue, and oatmeal. That's pretty. That's a nice one. Gosh, why didn't I think about firing them next to each other? <laughs> it could be so much easier. Uh, blue, green, copper, red, apple, green, and oatmeal. Same again. Blue, green, copper, red, variegated blue, and oatmeal. That lids a bit. That knob's a bit big, I think. Oh, that's pretty. That's the folk, fake ash with the apple green and oatmeal. 
That's very nice. I have a whole set of grouping of these to put out in the gallery. No space to put them, unfortunately. Chun Green, variegated blue and oatmeal over the top. With a little hand open. And these, I don't need to show you every piece, I guess. It's like I said, I like a little rim to hold on to when you actually, so your thumb can go over the top. So the lid should fit nice. And this is just a butter dish. Summer, so the turquoise is popular again. Uh, I just sold loads of mugs to two different coffee shops and gift shops in Lunenburg and Mahone Bay. So about 125 mugs just went out and they both ordered again. So these will go to them. Team four. It's got to be something for yourself. Look at that. Isn't that pretty? The chattering, I early said in the video, uh, it's artisanpotterycools.com. Uh, that's how I get that chattering effect. But the blue at the bottom sets that off with then the green and then stamped, uh, sponge stamped with uh, apple green and a little bit of blue and oatmeal up there. And then brush glazed down in the bottom with the same glazes that are on the outside um, to give a sort of more freer effect, I guess, there. But the chattering just looks terrific. Baking dish. Um, the lady who ordered these came and got hers, so I have uh, four extras of these. Um, there you go. Nice little baking dish. Here's another one of my bowls I was really excited about. So it's uh, fake ash, and then apple green, bright blue, and oatmeal stamped on the upper part and on the bottom foot, and then on the inside. They came out a bit too solid, but uh, it's, it's going to be, you know, we'll see. People will choose. There's five of these to pick from. Turquoise, variegated blue, and oatmeal. Chun green, variegated blue, and oatmeal. Three more turquoise for that gallery. So, Rutal green, and then turquoise and oatmeal over the top. Tur uh, blue green, copper red, with Chun green and oatmeal over the top. There's that one. I have many to pick from here. Too much choice. I don't know. That one kind of fits anyway. So. Oh, this one's nice. This is one number four. A little bit more variety in that center area. But once again, there's the chattering effect. Really nice tools. These four are all the fake ash with apple green, and maybe some oatmeal. Yeah, the oatmeal's on the bottom. Nice mugs. My usuals bright blue, variegated blue, and oatmeal. Two more of the Tenmoku Gold with the oatmeal and variegated blue. Chun Green, variegated blue and oatmeal over the top. Same again. This is the fake ash with apple green and a little bit of oatmeal on the knob. So there's your little butter dish. Ow, this one's really nice too. Sort of saved it till the last, didn't I? Give you a close-up, because that's what's nice about the inside there. So that is really pretty.
bright blue, variegated blue, and oatmeal again. They're cooler. <laughs> and that is the whales on top of the lid. Um, and that's uh, bright blue, variegated blue, and oatmeal with mouse gray over the top. There's the, there's the stilt marks on the inside. There you go. Bright blue, variegated blue, and oatmeal. And the same again. And that's the last piece of the firing. So, um, two glaze firings in one week is a lot. Um, but uh, I usually do um, two bisque firings um, and then I start glazing, and there's usually enough for three glaze firings after two bisque firings, and that's what probably happened here. Um, but uh, it is humid and hot again today. Not super hot, I mean, no, no complaints, it's 25 degrees. <laughs> but anyway, that's uh, about 80. Um, but it, uh, it's hot to unpack a kiln when everything's warm. Um, I'll put some photographs at the end of the video for a few select pieces. Uh, thank you very much for supporting this YouTube channel. Um, the glazes are all posted in videos throughout my history, uh, but they're mostly from um, Cone 6 glazes, and then the other book is Mastering Cone 6 glazes. Um, so, um, so you can get most of these recipes right out of those books. All right. So have a great summer. It's nearly halfway over. <laughs>